I think um, all, a lot of us that work in Indigenous health have gotten really good at doing the workarounds, right? So when we're dealing with, say, for example, federal coverage for things like equipment, we, rather than call out what's happening, which is that Indigenous people aren't getting the same access to things that non-Indigenous people are, like, for example, if uh, an Indigenous person needs a cane, they get a prescription, they have to go to the pharmacy, but if a non-Indigenous person needs a cane, they can go through home care, get fitted by an occupational therapist and get their cane right through home care, fitted all. So um, I think if we, uh, if we acknowledge that that's a, pr a problem, that the Indigenous people aren't getting the same access to resources, and rather than make a workaround, if we address that head on um, by providing letters, by getting together and Dr. LaFontaine and a few of the doctors in Alberta and I have gotten together and, and called out a few of these things. When I talk about equity, that's, that's the sense. No one should come into our system and feel like because of their color of their skin or their sexual orientation or choices they've made in their life or struggles that they've had with addiction or other things makes it they're just another case, you know? And I think when we talk about patient-centered care and innovation and all these other things, you know, technology has never led to equity. Equity has led to equity. Technology can be... <laughs> technology can be leveraged to make inequity worse or to make equity better, but unless we, unless we have that intent, unless that's our focus of what we're trying to do, and we have a deliberate plan for it, um, we'll never achieve kind of that end state. So when we talk about innovation in Indigenous health, I mean, it's so much more than telehealth. It's more than, you know, remote monitoring of vitals or, you know, changing patient care streams. It's, it's changing the way people feel about Indigenous patients, making it so they're not afraid, you know? And I mean, I know people are afraid of me when I come to the emergency room and I come in sweats and stuff, you know? People assume I'm a football player or security. I mean, you know. <laughs> and so that's a, that's a normal response. I'm not saying you don't feel those feelings, but just as providers, we have to be reflective on whether or not our feelings are actually translated into real world evidence. You know, we have to do our evaluations the way we're supposed to. We can't cut corners because we assume that this patient has that problem because of the way they look or the way that we feel about them.